This is video part three of five in our series on AM stereo and the Motorola prototype radio. In the previous video, we met up with Matt at the KYET AM stereo transmitter site. That's a cool video. I'll include a link in the description and eventually make a playlist of all five videos. While we were there, we discovered the radio wouldn't receive AM stereo. The light wouldn't come on. We changed the chip and checked a few other things, so we're going to dig into that in this video. And a bit of sad news, a few weeks after that video, uh, Joe Hart, the owner of KYET, passed on. Not Matt, the station engineer. He's doing just fine. KYET is the first AM stereo station I accidentally ran across while out exploring in rural Arizona that really started and piqued my interest in AM stereo. So thanks, Joe, for the awesome station. Uh, rest in peace, man. Back to our Motorola modified realistic AM stereo Sequam radio. If you didn't catch parts one and two, it's highly recommended. We found out in part two that this radio did not work, so we're going to dive into that a little bit today, and there's a few things I want to check. In part two, we took a trip out to Arizona to visit the KYET Cactus Country AM stereo transmitter site, and the station engineer Matt there gave us a good tour of the station. We found out that this radio did not work, the AM stereo demodulation didn't work, and we tried some adjustments and we tried to change the CQAM chip kind of out in the field without positive results. So he gave me some ideas and I've also been chatting with one of the engineers at Motorola about this and we're going to try a couple things today. Now, when we were out in the field, we changed this chip, which is the MC13020. Uh, Sequam chip. And there's a few critical components with this. There's a ceramic resonator in a 50 picofarad capacitor. And unfortunately, this ceramic resonator does not have the frequency on it. If the resonator is 3.6 megahertz, then you have to align the IF to 450. It, it would come standard 455, so you need to knock it down to 450. If the resonator is 3.64 megahertz, you align this to 455. Now just looking at these transformers, how they look like they're cranked all the way down, we're gonna go ahead and assume that this is 3.6 megahertz and this is supposed to be aligned to 450. Apparently the 3.64 resonator is very rare. So this one here, you can see it says 3.6 on it. So we're gonna align the IF before we send this thing off to WION. And I also want to check this, pull the board off and check this forced manorial pin and see what they have. Because this is supposed to be pulled high through a 100K resistor. And we were checking that out in the field and we had about 900 millivolts there. So I don't know if that's considered high or not. Um, as far as the capacitors go, None of these in this set are electrolytic. These are all tantalum, teardrop. And these usually don't go open. They usually just hard short. So what I might do is I might just check them with the, the cap tester and check them with the uh, diode check. And I'll see. But that's about, because I don't have an AM stereo station here locally, that's about all I can do. There was some talk of feeding a 25 hertz tone into my signal generator and see if it would activate because it AM stereo uses a 25 hertz pilot. So apparently I think if I FM modulate 25 hertz into my signal generator that should at least turn the stereo indicator lamp on. Well I'm looking at the forced monaural pin here. So pin 9 and pin 10. And this is kind of interesting because you can see somebody bridged pin 9 and 10 together. 
And notice how there's a big blob of flux there that there isn't anywhere else on this board, really. Notice how there's flux there. And I also, if you look at the top here, you can see where that resistor was. That resistor, that 100K resistor was between here and here. So what's going on with this? Did somebody modify this thing so it wouldn't work? I'm starting to wonder if this was done intentionally to disable the AM stereo because whoever owned it lived in a non-AM stereo market and didn't want any interference. They just wanted a badass AM radio, 2 watt per channel with bass and treble control AM radio. And so they intentionally did that to kill the AM stereo because remember this thing works as the the detector so you can't just delete this chip you'd have to basically you know pull this to ground but this never had the option to do that this never had a mono stereo switch you know the conspiracy part of me wants to think that this thing was intentionally kind of you know, bricked before it was sold to the public, but I have a hard time believing that. So I'm going to put this back. I'm going to remove that solder blob. I'm going to put 100K in there. I bet that fixes it. And then we'll align the IF. And like I said, if you, you notice how there's that blob of flux there, that there's just nowhere else on this clean board. So yeah, this somebody did this. So let me put it back. We'll align the IF to 450 and we'll we'll see how it performs, but I think we'll be getting it off to WION after that. I removed the solder blob, installed a replacement 100K resistor, and I put the original uh, 13020 chip back in that was originally in the radio. The this other one had come out of this kit and so I'm putting the kit back together, trying to keep everything original. Now I have 8 volts there, where before, I believe in the previous video, we had 800 or 900 millivolts. Okay, I'm on 450 AM, and I got the power cranked all the way up. Something's way off here. The IF was way off. It seems pretty good. So you can hear when we go up to 455. Yeah. Definitely. This is a test. This is a test. This is only a test. This is only a test. Okay, so I'm gonna go up above here. We're out the out of the AM band. Then I'm gonna let me see. Let me go up to 
500 hertz or is that 50 hertz okay that's 500 hertz what I'm trying to do is trigger the stereo light on this okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to 25 hertz. Oh, there it is. Wow, you can hear it at 10 hertz it's on. You can hear it going ba 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 ba. Listen. There it is. It's working. We're doing a little experimentation here. I have two signal generators. I have an older one, which is the uh, 8640, and the one that I use most, most of the time is the 8656. And the neat thing about the 8640 is it will allow you to put in your own external AM and FM modulation at the same time so you can modulate your signal with both AM and FM simultaneously and right now I have this set to 1.72 and I have the radio up here on 1.72 and the engineer from KYET AM stereo made me a couple experimental mp3s actually he made three or four or five of them i don't know what we can do because some of them are just kind of copywritten music so we might be able to do a couple seconds anyway we did an experiment experiment experimentation that's what this is all about right he did an experiment with these uh mp3s so he directly encoded the mp3 music file and the way he encoded is the left channel is left plus right, and the right channel is left minus right with 25 hertz pilot tone, which activates the stereo on this. It kind of works. You can kind of hear stereo, but these adjustments for the modulation level... Well, the deviation on FM and then the amplitude on AM are so sensitive that it's very hard to get it adjusted. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed the output of the radio directly into my camera and I'm going to let you hear it. So I have the output of the radio there going directly into the auxiliary input on this camera. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just record and I'm going to let you listen to the radio. Now like I said it's not true uh, wide stereo, but you can hear that it kind of works. And, you know, I don't know, maybe the MP3 encoding is screwing it up a little bit, the phasing or whatever, because MP3 has its own different types of stereo encoding. There's two or three different types you can apply when making an mp3 anyway let's let's go i'll play you some music remember the phone is feeding into the signal generator the signal generator is transmitting both fm and am on 1.72 that's our radio station frequency right there oh yeah uh headphone users will definitely get a lot more out of this than if you're just listening with a single speaker on your phone, you're not going to hear this. You might hear it on PC speakers, but you definitely need a solid left-right.
getting everything all packed up here, ready to go to uh, WION for the fourth part of this video series. And this, this part four should be totally off the chain lit. This should be one of the better videos. So sometime, someday in the future, stay tuned for part four, the exciting Motorola Sequam modified radio.